We spend a lot of time on this channel studying the lore behind the unique people and locations of Skyrim. Most recently, we uncovered a plot to enslave the people of Morthal and helped bring the antagonist, a vampire named Movar, to justice. But what happens when we take a step back from the drama and public affairs, venture out of the cities, and embark on a journey into the wilderness of Skyrim? What happens if we just observe the natural world from a distance? This is the first video in a series I will be doing on the creatures of Skyrim and, more specifically, how these creatures live and interact with the world around them. We will do our best to watch from a distance, only interfering in their affairs to test theories and gain understanding. In this first video, we will be taking a look at one of Skyrim's tallest, and perhaps most misunderstood, beings. It is my hope that you'll stick around for the remainder of this video, and join us as we go Walking with Giants. Giants are mostly found roaming the cold and frozen terrain of the Pale, the Tundra of Whiterun, or the warmer areas of Eastmarch. Standing between 11 and 12 feet tall, these human-like creatures tower over most other creatures in Skyrim, with the exception, of course, of the dragon, and possibly a few others. In preparation for this video, I visited several giant camps across Skyrim and noticed that, for the most part, Giants seem to prefer isolating themselves into small groups of two or three, as opposed to living and traveling in larger numbers. I even found several camps with just one giant inside, which leads me to believe that they are rather introverted beings. But that's not to say that giants don't value companionship. With the exception of one giant camp up in the mountains, every single camp I visited was occupied by one, sometimes two, mammoths. On the surface, the relationship between giants and mammoths seems similar to the relationship between farmers and livestock. The giants herd these mammoths and provide them with shelter and protection, and in exchange, the mammoths provide them with milk, which the giants turn into cheese. It looks pretty disgusting, but to each his own. However, after studying the giants and how they interact with the mammoths, I concluded that their relationship is not quite like a farmer-livestock relationship after all. The giants seem to value and possibly even worship the mammoths, almost as if they view them as some kind of divine being. I say this for two reasons. The first, and perhaps most significant reason, is that at the vast majority of giant camps I've visited, I found what appeared to be shrines constructed out of mammoth bones and skulls. Many of these bones were positioned high in the air, attached to the sides of enormous stone pillars or cliffs. To me, this is a clear sign that the giants honor the mammoths, and possibly even worship them. Where these mammoth bones come from is certainly open for debate. It is possible that the giants perform some kind of ritualistic sacrifice on the mammoths, and then display their skulls out of respect, but of course that has never been confirmed. It's equally as likely that the mammoths die of natural causes, and then the giants display their remains in their camps, again out of respect. The second reason I think giants honor and possibly worship mammoths is based on what happens when one of their mammoths gets attacked. As an experiment, I decided to kill one of these mammoths at a camp in northern Skyrim to see how the giant would react. Not surprisingly, it immediately turned hostile. <laughs> Although giants don't speak the native tongue of Skyrim, it's abundantly clear that they do have their own form of communication. While their grunts are mostly primal and reminiscent of wild animals, their written language is much more elegant. In every camp that I visited, I found several stone pillars covered in black markings. I would be naive to think that these markings didn't have any significance, they are, for all intents and purposes, a written language, though what they actually mean may never be revealed. Personally, I think that these symbols are a way for the giants to mark their territory, similar to how certain animals use various scents and sounds to let others know when they're getting too close. Again, this is just speculation, and I'd love to know what you think in the comments below. Of course, any being that has the ability to communicate be it through different symbols, grunts, or what have you, obviously has some level of intelligence. I bring this up because I've read several articles online by people arguing that the giants in Skyrim are oafish and cognitively impaired. 
Personally, I have a tough time accepting this. While giants might not have enough intelligence to create tools and weapons similar to the ones we commonly find in the game, they do show signs of intelligence. They write, they communicate, they cook, as evidenced by the skeevers that I saw at one camp, roasting on spigots over an open flame. There's evidence that they comprehend the concept of money, and might even use it to trade and make purchases with other giants. There's even evidence that some giants might even be trying to teach themselves to read, write, and speak Skyrim's native tongue. One of the camps that I visited was Golden Rock, located just northeast of the Throat of the World. In the back of the camp was a cave that the giants presumably used for storing and cooking their prey, like this cow I found slumped across a boulder. On top of one of the rocks, I found a copy of the book Knights of the Nine, which tells the history of a significant but mostly forgotten religious faction that were famous across the land during the early days of the Septim Empire. Why would this book be out in the open inside a giant encampment? Even if the giants dragged an unlucky Nord back to their cave and happened to find the book on his body, that still doesn't explain why the giants took the time to place it neatly in their home, where it's easily accessible. If they didn't intend to look at the book at all, wouldn't they have just discarded it? Still, these signs of intelligence seem to do very little to improve the giants' relationship with the Nords. From what I have read online and from what I've observed in the game, the relationship seems strained at best. Evidently, if the Hearthfire DLC is installed, then giants can and will attack homesteads, although I've never personally seen this happen in my game, even though I do have the DLC installed. Further evidence of the giants' violence towards Nords can be found in Dawnstar, where the Jarl, Scald the Elder, will ask you to venture out into the Pale and kill a giant that has been, quote, terrorizing citizens and visitors. I don't know enough about this quest to speak to it, but if nothing else, it goes to show that the relationship between the giants and the Nords or at least the people of the Pale, is rocky at best. It's also a documented fact that some farmers throughout Skyrim will actually offer their livestock to the giants out of fear that one day they'll attack. I actually witnessed part of this transaction in my playthrough when I suddenly noticed a cow walking along the trail. A giant followed the cow all the way to its camp, at which point the cow just kind of stood there. I was able to get a closer look and saw that this cow was covered in blue markings, though it's unclear whether these markings were made by the farmer before the offering or by the giants after the transaction. Either way, it speaks volumes that some of Skyrim's farmers fear giants enough to sacrifice some of their own livestock. Perhaps these farmers are right to fear the giants, though. As I learned the hard way, once you anger one of them, they enter into a relentless, unstoppable rage. During my time observing one giant camp somewhere near Dawnstar, I witnessed a pack of wolves try to take down a giant. As you can imagine, it didn't turn out so well for the wolves. When defending themselves, the giants use a combination of stomps and swings of the club, which are absolutely devastating when they land a direct hit. But to test their true strength, I knew that I had to do more than just watch from the sidelines. I had to throw myself into the fire and provoke a giant. Here is what happened. <laughs>
As you can see, the giants are relentless once they turn hostile. Notice how at one point a mammoth that belonged to an entirely separate camp joined in the fight and assisted the giant. This to me was extremely telling. It told me that regardless of location and regardless of which encampment they come from, mammoths and giants share a bond with one another. They will fight for each other and protect each other from all threats. And in a world where you're largely considered to be an outcast, the strong and powerful mammoth makes one hell of a companion. I hope that you enjoyed this video. While I feel that I covered a lot of information about giants and how they interact with the world around them, truthfully, I hardly scratched the surface. In the future, I would love to do a video on the history of giants and ponder where these magnificent beings came from. There's a lot of lore out there on that topic in particular, so definitely be on the lookout for a video sometime in the foreseeable future. But I'd love to know what you think, folks. Do you think that the giants are a nuisance to the people of Skyrim? Or are they simply misunderstood? Do you agree with me when I say that there are signs that they are somewhat intelligent and growing increasingly so? Or do you think that the giants are mostly oafish and unintelligent? Let me know in the comments below. I post new videos on Skyrim every Wednesday and Sunday, ladies and gentlemen, so be sure to check back in a few days for some more brand new content. If you like what I do, I'd appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button and then clicked on the bell icon so that you can be notified whenever I publish a new video. But that's all I've got for now, folks. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Don't su The gods gave you two hands, and you use them both for your weapon. I can respect that.